So hello there and welcome to Ivar's Fly Workshop. Today we are tying a fly which is called Dimplo, which is an Icelandic fly, totally Icelandic pattern made by Thurður, a man in Husavik. He actually had lots of pretty cool salmon flies made on his career. So this is an all Icelandic pattern which we are tying today. And the thread we are using, we are using an Uni Trico 17O, which is only about 40 years, and we are using a standard double hook number 8, which is an RX hook. And Dimplow uh, <coughs> is a really pretty pattern, and it's kind of like a fancy, fancy one. Because there are, you, you will see that there are like the wire variations of it. It's like it has a butt, which we are starting to make now with an oval silver tinsel. It's a medium, medium tinsel. It's a uni tinsel, and the size is medium. I prefer medium for the uh, butt. And I just take the tinsel around the hook and beneath the hook, and spin around the thread and attach it firmly as firm as possible without breaking the thread and then you'll snip off the rest of the silver and you'll start to wrap it again Yeah, this is what happens. Thread breaks. It's just there is one medication on that. <laughs> just simply grab the next thread available. That is an 8O black uni, which comes in to save our day here. But the trico is a really weak thread, and my bobbin is kind of uh, this bobbin I was using is kind of stiff, so it will result in that. Uh, the next part of the butt is this uh, blue, it's like a king or a royal blue uh, floss. And we adjust that to the shank of the hook like so. And then we make the rest of the butt of the fly. And this technically still counts as the butt because uh, the tail of the fly hasn't yet been put on. So it's a it's definitely a definitely counts as a butt, and we wrap that down, lock it in place with our with our thread, and uh, and snip off the rest of it, or the end, and f for a tail for the fly, we are using a blue uh, a rooster. It's like a, yeah, you can use a blue slap in or, or just make it sure it's blue. Not necessarily too light colored of a blue. Something like, like a normal blue colored feather. And we adjust that down to the shank like this. And I felt it's like a little bit too long so we can drag it in position and then lock it down with our with our thread and then we have the tail of the fly ready then comes the rib and the body of the fly uh, the rib is made out of um, yeah sorry first of all we have a short like a small hackle here which is an oystrich um, oystrich feather so it's like i said it's a it's a, a little bit fancy thing, this fly, and all of those flies from Thorder, they were, I would say, they were, there was a lots of, there were lots of uh, design put into it, so, so, uh, and yeah, his, his flies are like, some of the patterns are like classic Icelandic patterns today, so he really did a good job, definitely. And then we snip off the tag end of the feather there. And the small hackle is just as I wanted it to be. Um, and now 
we have the flat silver, which is the body of the fly, and then we have an oval silver. And we start by touching the oval silver to the body, and it's the same uh, silver which we just used for the button I just showed you. Then it comes to the flat silver. That's a Mylar, Uni Mylar uh, silver. Nice brand because it has two sides, one with gold and one with uh, silver. So you're basically getting kind of like a two and two for one per casing it. And it's a little fast forward here to build up a body of the fly. And then we'll start to wrap the uh, silver around. Get that in place. I just put it my hackle pliers on the rest of the silver just to get a better grip. I do that. Then we lock that in with our thread. Take like three or four, maybe a couple of tight wraps there to secure the silver. And then we snip off the end. And then we wrap the uh, oval silver around the body until the front of the head make sure there is place of course for the wing and for the beard because we do have a beard and the wing you can actually choose if you like to put a beard or, or or a collar on the fly it's just just yours to decide but uh, the the beard of the fly which we are going to do a beard we are not going to do a collar on this one because uh, originally it has a beard, not a color. But uh, the uh, beard is the same feather which we used for the uh, which we used for the tail. And we bring that in there to like adjust it to the shank with two wraps, a couple of wraps. Then you can drag it in place. And this is the, like like I said, this is the technique I like to use for it. And and it's like, yeah, I tried a lots of lots of methods during my 30 years of tying flies. And this uh, this method with the beard on the salmon flies is absolutely, I think, the best I've came up with so far. If there are some better methods, please let me know in the comments. And I'm willing to learn something new, of course. Then we have the beard attached to the fly, and then the last step is to um, is to think about the wing of the fly. And there is a black squirrel used for the wing, and it's a uh, vineyard squirrel, very nice. I bought it last year, and it's almost finished. So you can imagine how many many flies are tied with uh, with a black wing. But uh, as I counted last year I have tied probably it's probably close to 5,000 flies most of them just for colleagues who are you know fishing and asking me to tie for them but I'm not doing any fly tying on any commercial scale I don't have time for that and hopefully I'm not going into that category I'm just sharing, sharing the knowledge of fly tying with you guys here because I do have the time for it now then we come on the wing and as you see I just placed a warning on it and it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just the, I think, almost the perfect way to work with a squirrel. It keeps everything in place, it gets the uh, wing secure and you get like a warning beneath the thread so it makes the hat stronger. So there is like, it's a win, 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 win thing to do it this way. Thanks to Jon Sigurdsson, my mentor, who taught me this trick with the, with the squirrel and with the warnish or the head cement on it. So now there is nothing left but to place a couple of whip finishes on the uh, on the fly and uh, snip off the end and give it a coat of warnish on the head. I will coat it like twice. Do it once, let it dry and do it again with the vineyard, uh, vineyard uh, warnish I have. You can do it with other stuff, of course, but this is what worked and had worked very well through the years for me. So when we just as we finish the paint job of the fly, I just want to say thanks for watching. 
you may consider to like, share and subscribe the channel if you like the video. And there are a bunch of videos coming out now, just in the next couple of weeks. So I would say just stay tuned. Until next time, I'll see you guys and take care.